Welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. My name is Jolie and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist from the PIG Lab. Now in this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question on the topic of light. I've included this question in the handout which you can download for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. Without further ado, let's get started. Jonathan collected three samples of liquids X, Y, and Z from different sources. He then placed each liquid in a container and he shines a torch through each container of liquid and placed a sheet of paper below the container as shown in the diagram. Now what did he then observe? He then observed how much light fell on the sheet of paper when each of the liquid sample was in the container and then he recorded his observations in the table below. Now, out of the three liquid samples, X, Y, and Z, we noticed that there was a bright patch of light observed when liquid sample X was tested. Now, how are we able to observe a bright patch of light on the paper? It is because light from the torch must have travelled and passed through liquid sample X to reach the paper as shown. So in that case, this means that if I'm able to see a bright patch of light on the paper, liquid sample X must have allowed the most light to pass through. So let's write this down. So since liquid sample X allowed the most light to pass through out of all the other liquids, what can we conclude about liquid sample X? Is it the clearest or is it the muddiest liquid sample? It is the clearest, so I'll put a bracket, liquid sample X is the clearest. Now, let's move on to liquid sample Y. Now, we notice liquid sample Y is the opposite of X. Instead of a bright patch of light, we see that there was no light on the paper at all. So, if there was no light observed, what does it tell you? Did any light manage to pass through liquid sample Y? No. So that means liquid sample Y did not allow light to pass through. Since liquid sample Y did not allow any light to pass through, what can we conclude about liquid sample Y? Would it be the clearest or the muddiest? This time, we can say that liquid sample Y must be the muddiest. And of course, for liquid sample Z, we noticed that there was only a dim patch of light on the paper. That means it allowed some, not the most, some light to pass through. So now let's look at part A. Part A is asking you, what is the aim of Jonathan's experiment? Whenever we see an aim question, we would actually use the template to answer this question. So what is the template? It always goes like this. To find out if or how the change variable affects the measured variable. So whenever you want to answer the aim of the experiment question, this is the template to use. And you need to find out what is the change and measured variable in the experiment. So what is the change variable in the experiment? It is actually the type of liquid. So we have three different types of liquid, X, Y, and Z. And what is the measured variable? Over here, we observe the amount of light that falls on the sheet of paper. So that is the measured variable. So put it all together, how would you answer part A? You would say, the aim of Jonathan's experiment is to find out how the type of liquid affects the amount of light that falls on the sheet of paper. And that's your answer for part A. Part B. Now the question asks, which liquid sample is the muddiest? So going back to the observations, we have concluded that liquid sample Y was the muddiest. Now remember, whenever you are choosing your liquid sample, okay, whenever you face a choosing question, you need to use the 
CUE template, the choosing template. So what does the CUE template refer to? It refers to choose, use data, and explain. So over here, which liquid sample would you choose? As established earlier, you would choose liquid sample Y. Now, based on the data given to you, why did you choose liquid sample Y? It is because you observed that there was no light seen on the paper when the torch was shone through liquid sample Y. That is using the data. Finally, you explain what does it mean when no light is seen. This shows that liquid sample Y did not allow any light to pass through and it is opaque. So this shows us that liquid sample Y is the muddiest, unlike the other liquid samples, which allowed some light to pass through. So that is your answer for part B. Now, let's move on to part C. For part C, we need to state one variable that should be kept the same or kept constant for the experiment to be a fair test. Now, in order for you to conduct a fair test, students need to know that there must only be one change variable. So I'll write this here, only one change variable. And in this experiment, what is the change variable? It is the type of liquid. So the type of liquid should be kept different, but then the other variables in the experiment should be kept the same or kept constant. So let's go back to the diagram of the setup to help us with this. Now, other than the type of liquid, what other variables should be kept constant? There are a few answers possible for this. Okay, but the first one would be, we should keep the amount of liquid the same. What else? We can also say we need to keep the brightness of the torch the same. Even the size of the container or the transparency of the container should also be kept constant. Or some students could even say that the distance between the torch and the liquid or the distance between the liquid and the paper should be also kept the same because these variables, if different, would also affect the result of the experiment, which is the amount of light that falls on the sheet of paper. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos we have made, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!